The city created a new Asian Opportunity City Council seat in southern Brooklyn. The two main contenders are here to duke it out. The point starts right now. City Council District 43 in southern Brooklyn includes Sunset Park, Bensonhurst, and Gravesend. The two main candidates are Democrat Susan Zhuang and Republican Ying Tan. They're here to make the case for why they should be elected. So, ladies, I'd like to start by asking you both the same question. You're both vying to represent southern Brooklyn. It's a district that has 172,000 people. But I'd like to know how you feel you could best represent the district when only a handful of people actually turned out to vote in the primary. In your primary, I think you got 425 votes, and in your primary, you got 2,126. So how do you represent a district where not a lot of people care to go to the polls? Susan, you go first. I have been working in this district since 2014, hired by Assemblyman William Colton as his chief of staff, and I have been seeing thousands of people every year in our community office. Um, I actually brought our put, um, case log sheet here today. Um, every year we have 5,000 people come to our office seeking for help with education issue, public safety issue, um, street lights doesn't work, apply public housing. A lot of issues, they have come into our office. I have been helping them. By helping them, I learned what they need and what they want. And also, I understand what's the most important issues in our community here. And I know how to deal with those issues. That makes me ready to run and make me able to serve the community better. Ying Tan. Okay, with all these years living in the city, and I've been serving the senior citizen in my community, I have seen a lot of difficulties, like actually challenging the quality of life here in our district. And as a model, I have realized that the education part is very important because the Progressive Democrat Party has been like challenging our education system. And as a model, as a concerned citizen, I realized that this is something that I can do. And the only thing is I run to office, and with more power and more resources that I could like input for the community. I guess the question is, is there a way to get more people to vote? Is there a way to convince people that elections are important and it's important for people to have a say? Yes, that for me, uh, we, this year we have been registered almost 800 voters to vote in the election. We need more voter registration. We need more education. Teach me why is teach a lot of people why it's important to vote, why you need to go to vote, how to vote. A lot of immigrant families in southern Brooklyn, they don't know. They come from different system. They don't know how important the voting is, and they don't know how to vote, and they don't speak the language. And I have been doing it, uh, helping provide transportation, helping them to get to the translator going to poll site, help a lot of things and organize people go to vote and then know how to vote, why it, it's important to vote. Okay. I think in order to get the voter to believe in the candidate is you have to get out to knock on the door, reach out to the voters, you have to talk to the voter about how can you help them, what are the concerns they are concerned because you have to make that issue become your issue. This is the only way that you are representing for them. That's why since the first day that I joined the race, I'm on the street for hours every day to make sure that I reach out every voters and I heard what they're concerned and I talk about it, like what we can work with, with, with like the community together. And this is how I want the primary. People trust me. They trust that I can do something for them. And I have been serving the community for many years, and I have been using my action to prove the voters that I'm the only candidate I actually care about the city. I never leave my city when the city need me, especially during the pandemic. I myself like get a bunch of volunteers. We do face masks. When the face mask is impossible to find in the market, we shoot the face masks and we distribute it to the front line workers on the street. And I have proven them that I care about the city. I would do everything I can with all the resources that I have that I could provide to them. 
So you just said that you're the only person who cares about the city. You're trying to say that your opponent doesn't? Uh, it's not about that. Like, it like, depends on how much time they spend with the city, the serving community. She has been claimed that she has been serving in the office, but she obviously she's not here like since 2018 until she just got back last year. And I how could serve I never them? ever apologize to my Queen's opponent moving away to better my education. This is wrong. Attacking people to get better education, that's not the right thing to do. If you care about education, you will not t attack anyone about that. I went away. I, I moved to uh, Southern Brooklyn since I graduated from um, college. That's where I live. That's where my family, I raised my kid, two kids there. And my husband used to work in Southern, uh, now it's called Southern Brooklyn Health. But it's called Coney Island Hospital. He is the frontline worker there. He helped a lot of people in the community. Right now he is a physician in the community, help people. But why you moved to our state? You should because stay I get here the to have better education. If you don't care about education, but I do. What's your education? I care about education because ever since like they tried to reform the special ed high school, I was the one of the parents to drive all these protests to go against the policies. I was there even during the pandemic. I haven't seen you since 2015 when we fight to about SHAT issue. Bill De Blasio tried to cancel. Where are you? Where, you are where hiding are you? your I am there to help. I was there Susan, to help. Susan, you bought a and house also, in Indiana. You bought a you, house This is your primary, this is your primary this address. We can you, you can only you focus can, about residential. You can claim your you primary address and say that you love about the city. You never Brooklyn before. This and is, as a candidate, you, you need to show them the right information. You, you have been spreading false information. Brooklyn. You have been spreading false information. Okay, so let's let's try to talk about a couple of issues right now. First of all, I'd like to talk to you about the the asylum seeker crisis, the migrant crisis in the mm -hmm. city. How is the mayor doing, and what should he be doing that he's not doing now? I think he can do better. He's not doing enough. Like first of all, we have migrant crisis. We have to admit it, and the federal government seems like it's not helping us. So, is there any way we can do it? Yes, we can. We can end the right to shelter. We could end the sanctuary city. Because right now, like, you, you look at the central city and the right to shelter, it's totally different things. Right to shelter never meant for migrants, but our own New Yorkers. So you favor um, changing the right to shelter law? Yes. How about you? Um, I think right to shelter is meant to build for the New York City homeless, not build for homeless all around the world. So I support the challenge in the court right now. So how do you think the mayor is doing? Is there something he should be doing differently than he's not doing? I think he's trying his best to help the city. But um, migrant issue is a federal issue. It's very important federal government step up to help New York City. You cannot dump everyone in New York City. We don't have enough resources here. We don't have enough space. But they're not here. helping. They're not doing anything at this point. But, so what the city can do, this is something like elected, like council people, council member can do. And you think about it, they are not helping us. We have to find solution to help our own city first. So let me ask you a question. Would you accept a shelter in your district? No. When? No, we, we don't have migrant shelter in my district. Would you accept one there if the city wanted to do it? No, absolutely no. Why not? Because this is not the good one for our community. I don't think our community actually want the migrants to come in our, the, the district. How about you? I have been fighting against homeless shelter in our district for a long time. I was the one fighting against Kings Highway homeless shelter. I was the one fighting against Sunset Park shelter. We cannot afford to build any shelter next to our schools, next to our libraries. That's very important for the people in the community. And in Southern Brooklyn, a lot of parts, especially for Sunset area, people are underrepresented. They don't have resources there. We need to get the resource for those people first before we able to help in anyone else. Okay. I think we, we need to make sure that the community know about the shelter actually going to build. We need the community the voice to be heard. What did you do? What did I do? I, I joined like different community board meeting to make sure that I heard the voices. I never see you um, uh, against any homeless shelter. I was the one rallied against Kings Highway. You, you just started like by the end of last year. 
You were away for many years. I have been there to, I create petition online. I, I did so many things you never know. Yeah, you, you did a lot of petitioning, know. but you had done nothing. Like she has been calling me all the credit from the office from his, her boss. But you look at this. What bills that your what boss wanted? You, 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 you claim you all the credit. You and your, okay, and your boss voted for bail reform. You and your boss voted for bail reform. It's time for a break, but we'll be right back with more. We're back with the two main candidates for City Council District 43. My next question has to do with Rikers. The law now says it should close in 2027. Should it close or should it be changed because there are so many more inmates there now that can be handled by the community jails? Um, I don't think it's right to close the Rikers Island because where are we going to put those people? They're going to release to the street. We already have the issue in the community with the lack of housing, lack of resources and then we need to bring more people in we don't have the resources here to take more and also it's a public safety concern issue if we release a criminal to the street and they bring to the neighborhood next to the schools what's the parents going to concern what's the community going to concern should records close in 2027 no absolutely no. not i don't support community jail like we could use the land in Riker island to make more let the new job if this because of the situation right there like the environment is not good we could totally re to rebuild another one it, with the land so basically what you're saying is build a new jail on rikers yes so you can like build a community jail in the community because they could like simply escape or like all these jobs when they, like criminal when they release they could walk on the street this is not safe for our children and our seniors you agree with that i think it's very important to not using more resources, just fix what we have right now, not m use more tax taxpayers' money to build more jails. We need to fix the jail right we have right now and uh, use less money and uh, fix the issue. Yes, oh, I, I do agree with that, but we need more jail in Riker Islands. So in other words, you don't, you don't want to build a community jail, and how about you? Do you I don't want to build a community jail. So you agree on something. This is great. <laughs> um, let's talk about the police. Mm -hmm. um, there are a number of people in the city council that still want to defund the police or cut the police budget. How do you feel about that? I'm the only one get the um, PBA endorsement. Um, they trust me to do better work for the community. I think it's very important for the community and also for our city, the New York City, fully fund our police. We cannot cut the police budget. Defund the cops? No, 100% support the cops because, like, even the city tried to propose to defund the cops. Me and my husband we joined the rally to protect, like, our blues. We like show the support when they need it, and I will 100% support the, the cops. And also, by the way, I was the one petitioned to get more police officers in the subway stations. Now you can see every sub subway station will have one or usually two cops there to do the patrolling. I, I'm not surprised that as the Democratic like machine has the endorsement for the unions, but the problem is she support the bad reform, her boss and herself. And how can we trust Get her? Get straight. Assemblyman called and voted no for bail reform. The you first, don't know okay, no. The bill, no, you have to keep false information. It. See, this is how you, you are. You keep lying. You don't know. All the information the is in public record. You are the Everybody liar. can so look at it. Lie back to your queens. No, you, yes, you don't attack. Your life so why don't you go out of your state? Don't give the information to the no, public. No, you have it. Everybody can the look into the public, public information. information. You, there, you voted for bail reform. No, Everybody no, look at this. Law. Yes, he you did vote for bail reform. We show Marsha what there he voted for. When the bail reform started. You wait, need to have wait, it. You wait, need wait, to prove wait, it. Ladies. So the question really isn't whether uh, Assemblyman Colton voted for bail reform. It's what you would do in terms of bail reform and how you feel about it and how you feel about it. I, you, you, you made the charge. Go first. How do you feel about bail reform? So you guys voted for the bail reform. You're releasing all the criminals on the street. You're actually encouraging more criminals to come down here to commit crime. Because right now the crime is going up is because all these people, they believe that they are not accountable. 
like they go into the store to take whatever they want, they just walk away. They hit on somebody, they just walk away. This is not only about hate, but sometimes they know that because there's no consequence. They can do whatever they want. Your position on bail reform? I've Assemblyman Cota has been voted no, and I'm not to support bail reform. It, it will, either. yes. It will, and also yes. the people that don't know how to read the law, then they it will, don't know yes. how to present the facts to the public, should not be Yes, corrected. that's how you're lying. She, he actually voted for yes. You have to admit it. You have to tell the truth. You, you have to tell the truth. He voted yes, no, he voted for yes. The Sorry. law started in 2019. He voted for yes. Sorry, the law started in 2019. They vote no. Assemblyman Cotton voted no on the law. Okay, so let's talk about hate crime. There's been an increase in hate crimes in New York City. How would you deal with it? I, I have been a fight for, against hate for a long time. Last year we had the rally in Sheepshead Bay against uh, hate for Jewish. Uh, they put the Swarovski uh, on the um, Holocaust survivor monument there. And I also stand up um, all the hate crime happening in our community against Asian and also against Muslim. There's no room for any hate in our city. We need unite the community no matter you are Jewish, you are Muslim, you are Chinese, you are Russian or Italian, everyone should get united and fight for the issue we all care about. We are the citizens in New York City. We need to protect our city, love each other, not hate each other. How do we deal with it? Okay, so when the Asian crime, like the Asian hate crime hit in, our, uh, in my district, I started to have like different seminars. I started lessons to teach our senior citizens how to do self-defense. I was there to provide all the resources for them to protect them. And yes, the hate crime is not only hate crime, I just mentioned. Like all these people, someday they just do it for fun because they know they are not accountable. They just do whatever they can, whatever they want to do it. So we have to educate the people. When we commit a crime, you are accountable. You cannot hit on somebody. You cannot push on somebody on the train. And you have to educate all these people that, like, we have to learn about each other's cultures. We are coming from different city. We are coming from different country. We have to educate them. We cannot base on the religion that we have, maybe the culture that we have, and you start like go against each other. We have to learn about other cultures so we could like reduce the hate. And start instead of that, we started to love each other. This is how we build the love in the community. So we only have about a minute left. I want to ask you a question and you a question. We're going to try to divide the time. Susan, if you got elected to the city council, would you join the Progressive Caucus? No, definitely no. Why not? Because I haven't believed the agenda they have in Progressive Caucus. I will never ever defund the police. I will fully fund our police and also make sure our education, our seniors be taken care of in our, in our district. And I'd like to ask you, if you were elected, would you join the Common Sense Caucus, which is sort of a bipartisan group um, of Democrats and Republicans? Absolutely, yes. Because, Tell me why. Because we believe in the same values, that we are actually fighting for a safer street. We support the blues. We support quality education. We support like quality of life. Like We need common sense back to the city. We're going to have to leave it right there for now, but our conversation continues on our streaming channel, CBS News New York.